here you can see in the hieroglyphs in ancient Egypt a Templar's cross. And here the guy has a sort of a pyramid hanging around his neck. So here you can see it again, and even here. And these Templar's crosses have been depicted amongst the hieroglyphic depictions of ancient Egypt. As I've shown you in this video long time ago, that the Templar's cross is a 2D depiction of a pyramid in 3D, and that the Knights Templars are of Pharaoh's nobility. So I made this video uh, 12 years ago on my channel, Chatzafat, here's the title. And I also made a remake of that video with some music in it here. I uploaded it two years ago, I think, on the same channel here. And I actually made the video uh, eight years ago, but as my other channel got taken down, I lost it, and with a bit of luck, um, somebody had um, downloaded it so I could uh, re-upload it. This is much nicer to watch this one with some music. And also, these Knights Templars crosses are found in Egypt and carved into the existing hieroglyphs by, of course, the Templars themselves when they searched the notorious Templars' treasure of their pharaonic ancestors in the pyramids of Egypt during the Crusades, and then in 1291 brought their treasure into their neutral bays of the master race in the Alps to found their Swiss banks with that. Now watch carefully this here. Here you can see it again a bit bigger. Um, people have been trying to prove that the pyramids in Central America were also built by the pharaohs. And when I was looking at this round thing with a hole in it and apparently attached to a wall, I immediately knew that I had seen that somewhere else before. Yes, I saw it on a Central American pyramid by the Maya and Aztecs, who apparently played a ball game three and a half thousand years ago called Ulama, and still being played by the indigenous populations in Mesoamerica. So here it says Egypt, that's this one here, and the very same thing here, it's as it says here, Mexico. So there is a connection, and you know, this is obviously the very same thing. You know, I mean, you don't make a hieroglyph like by accident like this, and it's accidentally like the same thing on another pyramid in another part of the world. So these pyramids, uh, to my opinion, they've been done by the very same people, the pharaohs. Here we have another depiction of the very same thing we also find in Egypt, ancient Egypt. And these two are both in Mexico. So here it says the Mesoamerican ball game. Here you see that, the same thing as on the pyramid and as in ancient Egypt. The sports had different, different versions in different places during the millennia. And a modernized version of the game, Ulama, is still being played by the indigenous populations in some places. Here you can see, here you can read about the Ulama. It's apparently the name of the game. Uh, we're back in the Mesoamerican ball game. Here's about the origins. And they already played it like uh, 1250 BC, so that's, you know, 3000 years ago. Um, 
Of course, there's much more, but you can look it up yourself. And here you can see what the um, Mesoamerican ball game at the pyramids must have looked like. Here you see the ball flying, here's the hole with this thing here as well. If it was really for a ball game, because I have my doubts. Maybe our masters made the rings here for another purpose. And since the rings were already there, some time later, the slaves and the, the people, they made some, something else out of it, since the rings were already there. I mean, why not use it? Might be funny, eh? Maybe they used it to attach a spaceship onto it, which is not even so far off as hieroglyphic depictions of helicopters, airplanes and spaceships were found from the pharaohs of ancient Egypt, as you can see here. Look, this one looks like a helicopter from the side. Here you got the rotor blades. This looks like a, uh, a spaceship. This like a, um, a normal, a big, a big yacht of an oligarch or something. Or these prehistoric airplanes, which were found in Colombia, thousands made thousands of years ago. Aliens and pyramids, huh? Anyway, we're being lied to by our masters of Pharaoh's nobility, and there are weird things going on. For instance, look at these repto suits by the royal house of Al Winsar bin Harabia. You think it's a coincidence that the repto suits they're wearing even show snake scales in the pattern? and that they are in the typical blue-green copper-based reptilian colors. It says Repto suits. And look at the scales here and the pattern. It's the same as here. Here, compared to a real snake, you can compare the scales with the scale pattern on the Repto suit. And it's the same copper-based green-bluish color. And look at it. It's the same pattern, the same, the same things here as this one here. You think it's a coincidence? I mean, everyone can smile nice and charming into the camera, but that's not a criteria for being a good person. I met very unfriendly people in my life who were very good persons. And I also met very friendly and polite persons in my life who were very evil. You know, like the sort of, you know, you're walking around in Zurich, Switzerland, and they'll say, Grüezi, Grüßer, you know. But, well, but what are they doing behind your back, you know? Well, I know how they are, you know. So being nice and smi nice smiling and friendly, that's not at all a criteria for being a good person, you know. Especially, you know, if you're like, if you would be in politics or if you're a spy, you know, this sort of things. If you believe a nice, smiling person like these two here with their repto suits, you know, that's, um, if, you, if you think they would also be um, good persons because they smile so nice, you know. That would lead you straight to your death, you know, straight to hell. So, well, I'm a historian, you know, I don't know very much about these sort of things. I can't even pronounce it because of the censorship, but um, I'll let you decide yourself, you know. I only thought it was weird, you know, it's the same color, the same repto scales, and it is weird, you know, and there are weird things going on, but. I don't know much about it, so I'll let you decide yourself. It's more like a discontinuity, you know, and something attracting my attention. And when the Repto suit pharaohs were younger, 
They were surrounded by this guy here, by the name of Dr. Andrew Gay Lee, the housemaster of Eton College at the time, who in every video is flashing out his tongue in repto manner, which I first showed you in this video here on my channel Homeland Security and about which this German made a fantastic remake when he discovered my video. And he was honest about it, you know, showing my channel here. Unfortunately, his, um, so here you can see the, uh, the guy sticking out his tongue all the time. And again, I'm, uh, I'm a historian, I don't know much about it, but it's, um, it's, it's a discontinuity, you know, it's, um, it's attracting my attention. So his channel of the German got taken down, but this guy here of this channel, he, um, he saved the video. So here's the title and weird things going on. And here are some examples of the repto tongues at Eton College in some additional videos. Coming up right now. Hello, you over here. So here it says Eton College. Eton sounds, of course, like the pharaonic Aton, the sun god Aton or Amun Ra. And here's the Fleur de Lis concept of three, because that's them. It's the side of the pyramid. And here as well, the concept of three. And look, even the, um, the line is sticking out his tongue. So Eton College is for pharaonic offspring only. And this is their coat of arms with a fleur de lis, similar to the royal seal of Ukraine. I wonder if at Eton, the little pharaohs play this pyramid ball game. Maybe they use human heads to throw through the hole and call it Reptile Ball or Reptile Rugger.